Hey YouTube, it's Jay, and today we're going to start talking about our next uh, risk management topic um, on post-hit risk. Now many of the risks that we've talked about already and the ones that we're going to talk about, many of those are recoverable. If the risk happens, there's a way to get back in the game. The one we're talking about now is probably the risk with the biggest penalty. Because if you're playing a good player, and it happens, you lose the game. <clears throat> and potentially the match. So what risk am I talking about? Scratches. That's right, scratching the ball. Now I want to cover something real quick, just a little bit of math. I know it's maths, but I want you to understand this. So let's say our table has five inch pockets. That's about the average across the board, right? So five inch pockets. Well, there's six of them. So that means 30 inches of your rail surface is pockets, right? So five inches, five inches, five inches, okay? And so on all the way around the table. So how big are the rails including the pockets? Well, this is a four and a half by nine table, four and a half feet by nine feet means that we're actually going to do, that the actual math is four and a half plus four and a half feet plus nine feet plus nine feet. That comes out to 27 feet, right? And 27 feet times 12 to get the inches is, is 27 times 2. 7 times 2 is 14, carry 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 5, 54 inches. 27 times 1 is 270. Gives us a total of 324 inches, right? Our 30 inches divided by 324 inches times 100 equals. All right, so let me get out my handy dandy little pocket computer. And 30 divided by 324 is about 9.5. Three percent of the rail, almost ten percent of the rail is pocket. Okay, on an, on, a, on an average table, on an average nine foot table. Well, well, if we have a seven foot table, and I'm not going to draw it all out. So, if we have a seven foot table. It's 252 inches around. So if we have a seven foot table, now remember the pockets on the seven foot table are exactly the same size as on a nine foot table. Um, so in a three and a half by seven, I'm just gonna do all the math on my pocket computer. It comes out to about 12% of the rail is a pocket. Okay, um, and for eight foot, it'd be okay. That's a lot of rail that is actually a pocket, isn't it? It's actually a pretty large amount, which is why when we're done with this, I just wanted to show you these numbers. 9.3%, 10.5%, 12 12% of the rail are pocket. Means for every nine inches of rail, there's an inch of pocket. You ever thrown balls out on the table and just seen that almost no matter how you throw them, they seem to find a pocket somehow? Sometimes they don't, but most of the time, they just seem to find a pocket, right? It doesn't matter where you throw them. If you throw them out there and let them go around the table, they just seem to find pockets. 
So, if the rail, if the pockets are roughly between nine and and twelve percent of the rails, they're a significant threat. And if we happen to fall in them, we probably lose the game against a decent player, right? I've told you before, pool is a game of control, and giving up control by scratching, you're not only giving up control of the table by letting them on the table, but you're letting them on the table where they have the choice of what to do. And that's what we want to do is take away our opponent's choices. We don't want them to come to the table with choices. We want them to come to the table and, having, and be in a position where they have to figure out how they're even going to touch the ball, let alone try to make it, okay? So control. And scratching is a way to lose control. So my rule of thumb on scratching is on, on controlling Q is that I never want to come in towards a pocket closer than half a diamond on either side of the pocket. Okay? I never want to come in closer than half a half a diamond on either side of the pocket unless I have unless I have a guaranteed non-scratch. Okay, so if I have something like this and I'm going to cheat it, yes, I'm going to hit the pocket, in, I'm going to hit inside half a diamond, but I have absolute confidence in myself controlling that and keeping it out. So coming in towards the pocket inside half a diamond, we have a chance of, scratch, of, of catching the point. So we just don't want to do that. Same thing with the side pockets. We don't want to be inside half a diamond on either side of the side pocket. So when we're planning our routes and we're getting pretty close to actually getting into the routes, um, all of our routes, you're going to find that, first of all, the routes are planned around scratch shots. They're planned around well-known scratches. Um, and we're going to talk about well-known scratches in just a minute. But all, of, all the routes that I use to get around the table are all based on well-known scratches and then using spin to adjust so they don't scratch, okay? I am going to be very deliberately avoiding coming within half a diamond of either pocket. This still gives me plenty of rail to work with and if I'm coming in like this, there's no way to scratch it. Now that doesn't mean that it doesn't come into that rail too close, but we're gonna look at these angles when we talk about routes, we're going to talk about how to control it so that even, oops, I scratched. We're going to talk about how even when I'm controlling the cue ball to go wide, okay, you'll notice even when I'm controlling it wide, I'm still coming more than half a diamond from the, from the side pocket. I didn't mean to make that, that just went in. Again, Pockets are a big part of the rail, and things falling in them happen. Um, so, rule of thumb, unless you can absolutely guarantee you're not going in the pocket, just don't come within a half a diamond of the pocket. Stay, stay in the center of the rail, okay? Even better if you stay a diamond in, but half a diamond for sure. All right, well-known scratches. So, what do I mean by well-known? Everybody knows that when the ball is hanging in the side pocket, if you hit that with top English, and you're at about a 45 degree angle, that it's just gonna run into the corner, right? Everybody knows this scratch. We've all done it. I didn't scratch, but you, we've all done the scratch, right? So, how do you avoid that scratch? Well, so there's, there's a rule of thumb that I use on side pocket shots like that. Okay, there's, there's a rule of thumb that I use. Let me make this a little wider so you can actually see me talking. All right, so. If it's a forward cut into the pocket, meaning that the direction, the cue, direction of travel of the cue ball is the same direction that the object ball is going to get into the pocket, it's a forward cut, uh, then I use a little bit of draw just to keep it from hitting any scratch angles. So just a little bit of draw, doesn't take much, and now I'm in absolutely no danger of scratching. 
if it's directly straight into the pocket, I can stun this or I can draw it. If I stun it, it's going to go down and it's going to hit the rail about the same distance from the rail as this is from the pocket. Okay? I can either stun it or I can draw it. If it's close to the pocket like this, I will choose to draw it a little bit. Just not, not hard draw. If you hard draw, you could draw into the corner pocket. But if you put just a little bit of low, maybe half a tip of low, and it'll come back to the center of the table and out. Or uh, if it's out here, I'm not going to draw that. Now I'm going to stun it down because there's no chance of scratching. Okay? If that ball's straight in the side pocket, there is no chance of scratching on, by stunning. All right? Doesn't even come close. Okay, no danger whatsoever. All right, what about if it's backwards cut? So now, you're, now your cue ball direction is going to be going this way, right? And your object ball is going that way. So your cue ball is going to your left, and your object ball is going to your right. This is a backward cut. And on a backward cut into the side pocket, you do not want to draw this because you'll draw it right into the corner pocket. You want to go ahead and roll it forward. Right? So we use a little bit of top on that and bounce it off the side rail, and we come nowhere near the pocket. All right, so that's one of our well-known scratches. Three ways to play it. Just to recap very quickly, if it's a forward cut, we put a, about half a tip of draw on it. If it's straight on line with the side pockets, then we're going to stun it. And if it's past the side pocket, we're going to use top English. Rule of thumb. Now, not 100%. If you're out here and you're back cutting into the side, there's a chance of scratching in that pocket. We'll talk about that. All right, so we talked about the scratch in the side uh, for when you're shooting a ball in the side. Let's talk about the next well-known scratch. The next well-known scratch is when you have a ball down near a rail and maybe you're kicking at it because you got, you got snookered, so you're having to kick at it, and you kick underneath it, you hit the rail, and you hit the bottom of the ball, and the cue ball just goes straight across and into the pocket, okay? This is a well-known scratch. This one's actually a pretty easy explanation. See how that cue ball is heading for the pocket? We don't want to do that. We hit less than half a rail from the pocket. So if you have to kick at a ball and you're not kicking to make it, if it's something out in the middle of the rail, okay, a lot of times you will see, you'll see players that have something like this, and instead of kicking one rail, they kick two. Why do they kick two? Well, first of all, because they're not trying to get behind the ball, they're trying to hit the side. They're trying to hit one of the two edges of the ball, okay? They're doing that for two reasons. One is so they don't get underneath it and scratch, and the second is because if you hit the near side, the ball goes straight across the table and straight back, and the cue ball goes straight up the table. It goes in an almost straight line up the table. If you hit on this side, it nicks the ball closer to the rail. Hopefully then, this ball is gonna go this way and the cue ball is gonna go out and around and hopefully down there, right? So, if we've got something like this and we're thinking about how to hit it, you can play the hidden stick. Just understand that if you hit it, on the, on the line, so if I'm looking at the tangent line to the pocket, right? There's my, there's my tangent line to the pocket. Actually, it's more like here, okay? If I make contact here, it's going in this pocket. So if I'm going to kick at this, I'm going to want to either hit it solid so that the cue ball just sticks, which is the best way to play safety if you get another ball close. Let's say my ball was here. Right? I can kick and just stick it. And, and we'll talk about that when we talk about safeties. Um, Neil Spasian has a, uh, has a uh, video on that one. Um, actually, he's got a couple of videos on that one because there's a lot you can do with it. But if I'm kicking to an open table like this, 
I want to come off two rails, hit, hit the inside edge so the cue ball comes up this way and the 14 goes across and back over. That's, that's going to be my shot. Again, assuming that I'm not going to stick it. Let's say that 12's got a little bit too much of me to get behind and stick it there. You want to make sure that you catch one side or the other. See how that goes straight across and the cue ball comes straight up the table? Hopefully there's some traffic down here to hide behind. But even if there's not, that's a pretty tough cut. All right, so short version, you, you want to avoid, say somebody's got you like this, you want to avoid coming behind that 14 and getting deep in behind it because if you do, that cue ball just runs straight to the corner. Okay? To avoid that, <laughs> just make sure that you hit it deliberately short. Okay? If you've got something like that, don't hit to get un all the way underneath. Hit it deliberately to hit the side of the ball. Never try to hit underneath the ball unless you're sticking it. Um, sticking it looks like this. Didn't really, really stick it, but you get the idea. I, you saw that the cue ball did not go that way. I still made sure I was on this side of the 14. I'm going to deliberately play this short to nip off this side, let the 14 run across, and let the cue ball run down the table. Zero chance of a scratch. And I can adjust my speed based on what traffic's on the table. All right, so well-known scratch number two, behind the ball, make sure you play either deliberately short or deliberately long. You will find that you will want to automatically hit it exactly right to scratch in that corner. Take whatever your first guess at where to hit it is and play it a little short. You'll come out much better. You'll scratch a whole lot less. Okay, next one. Because of the proportion of the table, Almost every shot out in the center of the table out here with an angle is a dead scratch. So if you have a ball down here and you're out here shooting, because of the way the table is set up, this has two different scratch paths that it follows. The first one is if you shoot this in the pocket, you are going to come very, very close to that pocket with the cue ball. Very close. So to avoid that, if you have less than half, or uh, more than half, let me think. If you're going to make contact with more than half a ball hit, you want to use top English. If you're going to hit with less than half a ball hit, you want to use bottom, okay? As a general rule, there are exceptions to that. There's a point where this gets far enough down the table that that bottom will cause you to scratch. But for the most part, if, the, if you got a ball out here in the center part of the table and you're shooting it from a distance, less than half a ball hit, draw it to the side rail, more than half a ball hit, roll it to the end rail. Or just kill it, either way. Um, other well-known scratches. Okay, so one more well-known scratch. We're going to take advantage of this one in the routes. So in an old video, I, I talked about the corner five system and how for me, coming from the center of the pocket, because this depends on your stroke, you have to know your stroke. Um, for me, coming from the corner pocket through the third diamond with running English goes three rails into this corner. Now right now this table's playing a little long because this is brand new Simona 760 on it. So and 760 is Simona's fastest squat. So this might go a little bit long, but we're gonna give it a try and see what it does. Should be self-adjusting to the corner. Yep. Okay, so in billiards, that corner five system gets used to make contact between balls. So this, let's say these, these are, this is a billiards table, there are no pockets. Uh, the way that this shot is played is you play the, the, the object ball that's down here, one, 
two, three, and back up to where it is, and you put running English on this, and that will throw the cue ball into that same angle. So, let's see if I can do this. Okay, so there's my hit. And I get the same shot again. So if that pocket wasn't there, the pocket, obviously I'm going to hit the point on the pocket. But if that pocket wasn't there, I'd play the same exact shot again. But I'd just keep repeating that shot over and over to get my run, to put my run together. This also would have bounced out a little because there would be a pocket, there would be no pocket here. So that would have bounced out and been right there again. And so this shot is actually a well-known scratch, okay? Why is it a well-known scratch? Well, if I'm shooting into the corner pocket up there, and I use top, top inside English, I don't care that I miss, but watch the cue ball. Where does it go? It goes automatically to the corner. That is a well-known scratch. So there, there are other ones like that too. I'm not going to go into all of them. Here's what I'm going to say about it. The number one way to avoid a scratch is not to go to a rail. The number two way to avoid a scratch, so I mean obviously if I don't go to a rail, I cannot scratch, right? It's impossible to scratch if you don't go to a rail. When you're shooting, the worst thing you can do is let the cue ball go. Okay, so what does it mean to let the cue ball go? If you, hear, if you hear a commentator on a pro match talking about letting the cue ball go, what they mean is, hey, he's got a shot, it's a makeable shot, but he has no idea what's going to happen with the cue. And it's not that he has no idea, I know exactly what's going to happen with this cue ball, but the problem is that I'm letting the cue ball go, so I'm, I, don't have a, I don't have enough of a hit to control my cue ball, I have to let it just kind of go and I have to count on my speed control to take me where I'm going. And if you let the cue ball go, you know, there are all kinds of different ways to scratch. So you really don't want to let the cue ball go. You would rather take, let's say that's my, my shot now, and my next shot says 15 up here, I'm just making up, putting balls on the table. Okay, if I've got that same shot, right, I'm not going to try to go around the 15. I could. I mean, it's not that hard to get around it and avoid it and get my leave. Okay, so I missed a shot, I know. But you saw I had to let the cue ball go. All kinds of bad stuff can happen. Instead of letting the cue ball go, even if I've got a really thin cut like this where I'm going to have no chance of controlling it, my better choice is to kill it on the rail and just accept that this shot's going to be a little harder. Look how close I came to that side pocket, even killing it on the rail. Just because I had to let it go, I had no choice. I don't know if I'm going to scratch on that shot or not. I have to take my chances. Again, I've got kind of a rolling angle so I can make that ball but I've got to let the cue ball run around the table. We don't want to let the cue ball roll. Okay, we, if we're going to move the cue ball, that's one thing. Rolling the cue ball and hoping for shape is another thing entirely. Short version, don't, uh, if you don't go to a rail, you can't scratch. Um, but you also may not get your leave. So go, go, we need to use the rails. But just know, if you, if you don't go to a rail, it is impossible to scratch. Uh, not hitting the rail closer than half a diamond, unless we have absolute control where the cue ball is going to go. Uh, number three, don't run into other balls on the table. Uh, number four, avoid known scratches. Use your knowledge of the scratches. If you see yourself scratch on a shot, right, put it in your mind, hey, this scratches so that the next time you shoot it, you can either roll forward or, or draw back to avoid the chance of the scratch. Uh, and number five, don't let go of the cue ball. 
meaning keep control of your cue ball. Even if you have to go around the table, as long as it's controlled, it's okay. As long as you know exactly what that ball is going to do and you're doing it for a reason, it's fine. If you're going around the table and rolling because you got too thin on the shot, you're at a huge risk of scratching. So with that, I'm going to let you go. Uh, that's scratching. Um, we'll talk about some other post-hit risks in the next couple of videos, and then we'll be moving on into routes. So we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, like, subscribe, ding the notification bell. We'll see you next time.